Hi, and welcome once again to Reflections. This is a 15-minute broadcast that's designed to enlighten you, to encourage you, to inspire you, to serve the Lord and to do what the Lord will have for you to do. We always try to keep our finger on the pulse of reality, um, acknowledging where we are in history, where we are as a society, where we are as a world, and we do want to share messages with you that will encourage you in the in the, the midst of the circumstances that we find ourselves alive today. I want to deal with another attribute of God. I will be doing a series of this, not necessarily one each week, but I want to deal with the second one today. We dealt last week with God is immutable, means that He doesn't change, and this week we're dealing with God is faithful, and I'm sure that you'll be blessed and encouraged when you listen to this message. But before I get into it, um, just want to let you know that you can find all my messages on the YouTube channel, uh, Philip Drayton or Pastor D. Uh, that's the name of the channel. Or you can find it on Gospel Circle. The brother who edits my videos, uh, he has a YouTube channel called Gospel Circle. And I've asked him to put all of my videos onto his channel as well. So you can find them there or you can find them on Facebook, uh, on my page, face Philip Drayton, Facebook. Um, and then on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock, I go live with a full message. This is just a 15 minute, but on Sunday mornings, I deal with a, usually a 45 to 50 minute message. Uh, so if you want to, let's say, attend church, uh, you cannot go out of your home to go to a physical building. Uh, but there will be a message there uh, live at 8 o'clock on Facebook that you can be a part of. Also, if you want to get in touch with me, you can do so by emailing me at phildbage at gmail.com, phildbage at gmail.com, or I have a WhatsApp uh, dedicated number where you can also reach out to me as 1-246-255-7953, 1-246-255-7953. All right, so today we're dealing with God as faithful, uh, being very conscious that we don't have a lot of time. I want to get right into it here. And share with you, as we're talking about the attributes of God, we are kind of asking, you know, who is God? What is God like? What kind of God is He? And there are a lot of misconceptions regarding God in the world, a um, lot of misconceptions regarding the, the Bible. Um, and so many things, so many different people's ideas are out there. And sometimes it's a little difficult trying to figure out who is right, who is wrong, what is truth, what is not truth, what is error, what is uh, deception. I do want to bring a message on deception on a Sunday morning, but whenever the Lord gives me the release to do that, I'll do so. It may be this Sunday, but I'm not sure as yet. I'm just waiting on the Lord for His direction. So when we're looking at the attributes of God, we, we cannot look at them in isolation because who God is, is all of these things. Uh, when we try to kind of section them out and deal with them piece by piece, we can give a little light, a little explanation as to what uh, is, is involved with this particular attribute. But none of his attributes really exist on their own. They all kind of overlap, they are intertwined, and they kind of work together. As you will see, if you watch the God is Immutable um, video, you will see that um, what we're talking about today about God being faithful they are very, very much interconnected. So let's go, let's look at it, let's see what we can gather from the Word of God regarding the fact that God is faithful. Well, when we looked at God as immutable, it really means that God never changes. And the fact that He never changes actually feeds into the fact that He is faithful. Uh, it is excellent to know that we have a God who is faithful to His people. Um, God cannot be unfaithful. If He is unfaithful, then He is not God. We can have a covenant, we can have a contract uh, with someone else, and we can break that contract. <coughs> excuse me, or we can be, <coughs> excuse me, we can be unfaithful uh, in that contract or to that contract. But God cannot be unfaithful because He is God, and He never changes. So His essence never changes, and <clears throat> one aspect of His faithfulness is expressed in Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. It says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful God. He is the faithful God, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. Now, a thousand generations is a lot of generations. 
But essentially what is being brought out here, even way back in the Old Testament, as God is dealing with a very <clears throat> rebellious people, a very disgusting people in many ways, He is saying, look, I just want you to understand that if you love me, you keep my commandments, you do what I've asked you to do, I will be faithful to you through a thousand generations. And that's a lot of time. That's a lot of space. So in spite of what Israel may have done or may do, God still remains faithful. I'm going to bring this out in another passage of Scripture in God's dealings with Israel in just a moment. So God says that he will be faithful to a thousand generations, to those who love him and keep his commands. Now this is very applicable to us today as we find ourselves in a very difficult circumstance of life. We need to remember always to love God and to keep his commands. It's very, very important. Uh, difficulty or suffering does not give us a, a free uh, to do what we want. It doesn't work that way. We are to keep God's commands. We are to love him regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves under. If ever you get to a place that you feel that you, you have to break God's law, you have to be unfaithful to God and to the promises maybe you have made to God, go read the book of Job. You see what Job went through, and Job remained faithful to God. And This is not about us being faithful to him, but about him being faithful to us. The Encarta Dictionary offers a definition of faithful that I find most instructive. It says, uh, faithful means you're consistently trustworthy and loyal, especially to a person, promise, or duty. Consistently trustworthy and loyal. I, I am so grateful for the fact that God is not just trustworthy, but loyal to me. That we always look at it the other way around. That we should be loyal to God. But He's loyal to us as well. So He's made promises to us. He has entered into a covenant with us. And, and He remains loyal to that covenant, regardless of what happens. Now, hold on, and I'm going to give you some truth that is very important. Hold on to this. No one can actually deal with the faithfulness of God in a 15-minute broadcast. The reality is the faithfulness of God is so, is so vast a subject and its applications are so varied that you cannot truly deal with that, not even in one message. You can preach a message about God is faithful, but, but His faithfulness is so, is so broad, it's so vast, it's so, it's so all-encompassing that you can't really deal with it in a 15-minute broadcast. But at least maybe I can whet your appetite a little bit, give you a little encouragement to let you know, listen, no matter what you're going through, God is faithful. So I suppose what I want to do is to give you a basic truth today and a basic understanding of the reality that in His nature, God is faithful. It is a fact and it cannot be changed. Uh, so what I'm going to do in the next few minutes that we have is present to you two basic underpinnings of the faithfulness of God. And I will do that from one verse of Scripture. I'm going to show you two sides, two very, very different sides, but two real and true sides of the faithfulness of God. No. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, If we believe not... Yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. That's who he is. He is faithful, and if we are unfaithful, if we don't believe, God cannot deny himself. He will always be faithful. In, in speaking to the church, speaking to Christians, we often speak of God's faithfulness in, in, in its various applications. And we tell people that, look, even if you lose your faith, it doesn't change God's commitment of love toward us. And this is illustrated in Jeremiah 3 verse 14, the first part, which I, I mentioned I would get to uh, in this broadcast. It says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married to you. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married to you. When he says he's married to you, he's talking about in the context of, of the Old Testament, deal, dealing with Israel, I am your master, I am your husband. All right, just so we, we get that clear in our minds. I could probably find a, a hundred Bible verses that speak of God's utter faithfulness to his people. And this should actually bring out of us such a great confidence in, in our God 
that we should never doubt him. We should never fear for the future or fear for the present for that matter. Uh, give us this day our daily bread. Let's deal with one day at a time. Let's not worry about tomorrow just yet. Um, from this context of God being faithful to us here. So every promise that he's made, he is faithful and capable of keeping. As we talked about the immutability, the God, fact that God doesn't change, that he's not subject to circumstance, subject to the, the whims or fancies of, of another person. He's not subject to government. He's not, he's not subject to anything. So when God says something, he can, he can do it. He's got all the power. That's another attribute that we'll talk about another time. He's got everything under his feet, everything under his control. And therefore, when he says, I will, it means that he will. This is the basis of our confidence in God. He is faithful. So if God says, I'll do this for you, you know he's going to do it for you. A.W. Pink writes, no one ever yet really trusted him in vain. He may safely be relied upon, and his people need to know that faithfulness is an essential part of the divine character. God is married to the backslider. So even when you literally turn or run away from God, he will still there, he'll still be there for you. He'll still work with you. He'll still try to woo you back because that's who he is. He cannot deny that. So when we are unfaithful, yet he is faithful. There are other things that come out of that that I, I can't go into in, sh in such a short message, but just enough to, for us to understand that when God says, turn or backslide in children, for I am married to you, what he's saying is, look, guys, when, when you go the completely wrong direction, you're going to find my presence still there, not necessarily to bless you in all the ways that I bless you when you're walking in obedience, but certainly God will remain with you to woo you back to himself. So the other side of his faithfulness that I wanted to present that's reflected in 2 Timothy 1, uh, sorry, 13, 2 Timothy 2, verse 13, it says, If he believe not yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Here's the reality. God is faithful to his promises, but he's also faithful to his threatenings. If God says, if you sin, you will die, that's a threat. That's also a promise. It's not a good promise, it's a bad promise, but it is a promise. And the same way that God is faithful to be with his children, to bless his children, to take care of his children, he is also faithful that when he says to that to, to you as, as his child or to you as his creation, that if you don't turn from your sinful ways, you will end up being judged by God. He is as faithful to that as he is to he will bless you. We find in uh, Second Peter verse, chapter 3 and verse 9, The Lord does not delay or is not tardy or slow about his promises, according to some people's conception of slowness, but he's long-suffering, extraordinarily patient toward you, not desiring that any should perish, but that all should turn to repentance. God is slow to judge his people because he gives us time to repent. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to turn from their sins. And so he is slow towards uh, uh, executing judgment. Even when as Christians we, we do wrong and we deserve punishment, he's slow to do that because he, he wants to give us space and give us room to turn from our sin, turn from our ways, to repent of what we've done, to ask his forgiveness and to get our lives right. So in terms of salvation, God is faithful to work with you, to bring you to a place of confessing your sins to him. In terms of being backslidden, God is faithful to, again, work with you, to draw you back to himself, to bring you to a place of repentance. But in terms of Christians, his children, God is faithful to us to keep his word, to keep his promise, to be there for us through thick and through thin. So we, we have it all presented to us in a very small nutshell today. Listen, God will be faithful to his promises, but he will also be faithful to his threats. So when God sends a warning in his word, when God sends a, a consequence in his word, we have to take those things seriously. Because if we don't, God will be faithful to do what he said he's going to do. 
But I thank God that many who are watching this broadcast are on the right side. We are walking in obedience to the Lord. We love Him. And therefore, we can rest, we can relax in the faithfulness of God, knowing that everything that we need and everything that He has promised to give, to do, and to be for us, even though it may seem a little while in coming, God is sure to come through for you and to come through for me because He is faithful. God bless you. Walk, live, and trust in the faithfulness of your God.